Welcome to Merkaba Chakras. Today we interview a holistic Shah medium, Tanya D. Now, before there was an online intuition or guidelines, Tanya was already working with the energetic highway, spirit space, and energy work communicating to the spirit world. Like many of us in the spirituality space, Tanya did not resonate with many religions, but maintained an inner connection to source in all sentient beings. So she got off her fear of being labeled as one of those and climbed into her skin and off of the roof. Tanya never had inspirations to climb the corporate ladder or go all the way through college, but she did know that she wanted to help people heal using her connection to source. As a holistic Shah medium, Tanya receives messages from other planes of existence and dimensions about her clients. And in ancient times, Tanya's skills would be recognized as shamanism. But today, it's connecting to source within. And we all have that connection, whether we tap into it or not. So let's welcome Tanya. Well, Tanya, thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me on your show. I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to hear about what you bring to the table because I read a little bit about you and I'm really super intrigued and I know the audience is going to love listening to how you can help them, um, especially in these times. So please tell the audience a little bit more about your journey into becoming a holistic Shah medium. So my journey began when I was seven years old. I was actually blessed with a near-death experience. Uh, my neighbor ran me over twice with literally a bus. And um, I left this dimension. I didn't see a white light. I was in a coma for a while. So when I was in the other world, the other planes of existence that really exist, I recognize it as actually the 11th dimension. And I remember the beings being androgynous. And one of the beings that were there are with me now. It's one of my spirit guides. He's um, with me all the time. But energetically coming back into this earth plane, it took me a really long time. Um, the struggle is real. I was really upset and angry that they sent me back because that plane of existence was it's not just that it was so much more elevated. Um, it didn't have all the chaos and the discourse of this universe. So it's like we have two universes. We have the shadow universe, which we're in, and we also have the heavenly universe or the galactic frontier is what I call it. So these, there's two playing fields that we have the ability to play in. Well, let me ask you something, because I have interviewed a couple of different NDEs for my third book um, that I um, putting together in Buddhism. And everybody has a different understanding of just explaining the different dimensions that they go to because many of the people that I've interviewed and done research with, they, it depends on where they land. So you landed, um, it doesn't seem like heaven, but you landed at the 11th dimension. So what makes the 11th dimension different from the dimension that we are in right now? So how do I say the dimensions? Um, different dimensions have a different frequency and a resonance field. Mm -hmm. um, how I see it is, um, it's like how, like sometimes, uh, like I can, I have a, an ability to like climb into nature and literally be into the medicine of nature, whether it's an animal, a plant, a tree, a river the earth, the soil, the energetics of it. But there's also, um, how do I say, it's, it's like when people get stuck in, in adversity or discourse or even evil, there's like these lower shadow work that happens for humanity to work through the lessons that either um, they need to work through in this lifetime with different lifetimes that they literally plant in this time space to heal. And you don't heal all of those lifetimes at once because God, universe, 
the galactic frontier, it's too much to digest. It's too much to process. So before we land in this lifetime, and right now we're literally in an initiation, because all of these timelines from like the Dark Ages, the Roman Empire, the American Revolution, all of these timelines are literally merging together. That's why we're having so much chaos right now, because all that lineage needs to be healed and brought forward so we can clear up our chaos and move forward, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I have a question also about that, because you mentioned a really good point about timelines merging. And um, what what is your perspective on the, the timelines merging, the timelines diverging, um, and how do people know when they are entering one timeline versus leaving another? I mean, how can, how can you explain that to somebody who is, you know, coming into this going, my reality is a little bit weird different than I remember it before. Did I jump to another timeline or, you know, explain that to people because it's very confusing for many people. So timeline, well, you, I mean, you can vector into another timeline, another time space dimension. How it looks like to me is it looks like tinker toys. It literally looks like little tinker toy nodules. And then there's a timeline from one tinker toy nodule into another one and they vector all over. So then it starts looking like a spider web. So for me, when I jump in a timeline, um, God universe, I can only go so far because I'm actually, I'm an assistant to your own healing. If you haven't learned the lesson and I go in to shift the lesson, then it becomes my lesson. Right? So then God, Ooh, that, goes, I pick up that debris and the person who's I'm trying to assist still carries that coagulation for forward in time. So that's where we get like beliefs and patterns and like, it, you know, I have a lot of clients who date the same person with a different uh -huh. face because the uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> is still there. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm always about it's like no the face you are dating now is person x but the vibration is still person z it's just a different face we do it all the time we do it with our careers our family relationships food everything so you, you really have to cleanse the clutter and the debris the foreign energies that really aren't who you are because we then start living our life based on other people's beliefs, not even our own. Um, we don't question if there are beliefs or, you know, we just kind of go with the flow. And then next thing you know, we get dammed up like a river or a record player scratching and we can't figure out how to move forward through the chaos. Yeah, that is so true. I've, I've, I've seen that alone with my hypnosis clients in the modalities that I've used as well. And it is a very common discussion point in Buddhism as well. Um, these conditioning, we call them conditionings, right. um, or what some people would call um, stuck energy or um, triggers in your life. I mean, what are the common ones that you typically see from client after client after doing this so long that most people can relate to? Well, def absolutely religion or religion can create a chaos, but I meant relationships, but obviously religion came up. Um, <laughs> there are no accidents. Always, um, if you get in a car accident, it's generally the universe is trying to move you. You're not paying attention. So the hiccup the universe sent you is a car accident, getting fired from a job. It's like you didn't get the memo. So the universe is going to pick you up and move you where you're supposed to be. So we, you know, we're, we've been programmed, conditioned, and we're familiar. So we don't like change yep. because mm -hmm. change doesn't feel good, even though there's magic on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. We just like doing the same habit, habits all the time until we hit discourse or adversity, whether it's diabetes, cancer, new job, whatever. We, you don't just wake up in these spaces you did something whether it's when you were 5 10 15 whatever all that gunk you carry it like a backpack for decades or centuries or you know 
So you start got you just have to start cleaning up your closet and your clutter and get out of the conditioning and you know get familiar with the unfamiliar. Right, right. And the thing that I wanted to ask you about about that area also is I found, and I'm not sure if you found this in, in your work as a Shaw medium, that many people will continue to do the bad habits that are not good for them and will not get them to where they say they want to go um, because they're just scared of the unknown. They're scared of, I don't know this new pattern in life. What, what do you say to people who are feeling like that in their life? Like they've wanted so long to kind of change their patterning, fix the triggers, et cetera, but they just um, are dragging their feet. So I always, I always ask my client, number one, boundaries. People do not have boundaries, not just physical boundaries, but energetic boundaries. They're too permeable. It's, they're afraid to say no. They do things because they don't want to hurt someone's feelings, not recognizing they're hurting their own feelings. So there's usually always a boundary issue. Then I always ask them if they love themselves. Ooh, that's a big one, girl. How long does that one take? Yeah, exactly, right? Yeah. If they say they do love themselves, I ask them, how do they love themselves? And they'll give me a hundred little descriptions. I'm like, no, that's how you love others. Mm. What do you do that's loving to you? And they usually look in the mirror, you know, and they're like, oh, my God. So I start with that, and then I ask them if they have a conversation with their heart. Or I ask them what their feelings say. Because if somebody really wants to heal themselves, these are conversations you have to have. Because until your heart authentically decides, then your decision's going to fail. Doesn't matter what it is a drug addiction, weight loss, doesn't matter. There's no shame in the game, but until you decide of your own free will and your heart is invested in that decision, it won't happen. Yeah, yeah. It 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 sounds a lot like um, a lot of, like the twelve steps and a lot of modalities. It's like you can't um, force somebody to do something until they're ready. They have to hit. Um, you know, the button themselves, they have to reach out. So, you know, with mediumship as another tool to use to connect to your higher selves, um, how are you using it with customers or with clients that you have? Like, you know, when you go through these line of questions, um, are you hearing something from the other side to ask this person or, you know, what is the process like? Um, I usually, before I schedule somebody, I already get in, I have visions first, um, and then I hear some clear audience. So I'm very, um, I work through, it's called the shaman's portal. It's a portal right above your head. A lot of people call it the eighth energetic center, the soul chakra. That's kind of where I can go. I can literally look into the book of records, the Akashic records, the tree of life. It's like a library. and it just kind of assists me. And then above that is also um, the ninth energetic center where I can actually look and perceive things, how God perceives things to assist people to look through literally the eyes of God to have the perception of what's really happening versus how they perceived it happening. Right? So a lot of people always go to the negative of a story Instead of saying, well, this is happening for me instead of to me. Right? Right, right. So I I work through those mainly. And then energetically, I always have to bring in the root energy center and the earth star. So I I kind of have to literally use my entire being (laughs) based on the person. So sometimes I might feel something. Sometimes I might see it. Sometimes I hear a voice. Sometimes I look through the book. <laughs> so there's all these things that happen for me. Sometimes my hands heat up and I'm just directed where to put them. So there's a, and I, I mean, I've been doing this so long that it's just natural gravitation for me. Like I'll even like 
send clients to an acupuncturist that I know. Like, I'm not afraid to refer someone to somebody else. I'm an assistant on this journey. There's just, you know, it's never a one and done. You have to do your work. And the shaman aspect, because I do divinations as well, a lot of people, I give them prescriptions, but a prescription, not necessarily a drug prescription. It's opening up the door to the other world so they can like heal a family ancestor line or start the transformation and the change or heal their physical body or get some more mental clarity and just kind of bring in all these elements that we all can tap into and just open that corridor to get them on their journey, their pathway. Mm. You know, one of the things that um, a lot of people can resonate with is, is relating to a story of a client. Like there's a lot of women right now who are going and men who are going through changes in their relationships and relationships that may not have worked for a very long time. And they're feeling like it may be time to look at other alternatives or they're maybe in a, in a relationship where they're ready to move forward and kind of deepen that relationship. I mean, so what kind of, what type of clients do you typically get who come in for the most common question is, about their personal relationships with their, their spouse, their loved one. Okay. okay same thing. <laughs> I ask them if they love themselves because you will only attract the person that's at the same frequency and vibration that you're at. So explain that, explain that because that is a big one that people just, they still don't get. So if you're like, if you're in a negative relationship, you are frequenting that frequency. You know, it's not the other person all the time. You have to look in the mirror yourself. So how are you loving yourself? What are the thoughts you say to yourself? What's the conversation you tell your heart? You know, do you like the chocolate? Do you want the blue car? Do you like the red shirt? Like these, like what turns your heart on? What gets you excited? Not your partner, you. And what happens in relationships, and I see this all the time, you give up an aspect of what your heart wants to make the other person happy, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and you're miserable. So mm -hmm. what happens is over time and space, all these little baby steps of kernels of not loving yourself, giving up a piece of your soul, your spirit to have this relationship, you wake up because you made that decision and your heart wasn't 100% invested anyway. Your mind starts telling you all these things. Maybe you're lucky to have this person. Maybe you should, you know, you're never going to make that kind of money. I'm lucky to have, the, you know, you talk yourself into this, whatever it looks like for you. But you didn't pay attention to your heart. You didn't listen to your feelings. Like the first second, like my clients, have a doubt about a relationship, then I, it's, it's ended. It's one and done. You, you doubt the person. You think they might be cheating. You feel X, what, any negativity. That relationship's over. I know it is because their heart's not invested. The feeling wasn't loving and butterfly. -y. It was like, oh, I don't know if this is the one. Well, if you don't know, the fact is you do know and you don't belong with that person. You know, and it's hard to have those conversations, but down the road, they're broken up, they're divorced, whatever that picture looks like, which is fine. And another thing I tell my clients, until when you break up from divorce, marriage, whatever, separation, you need to stay single for one month for every year you were with that person so you can clean mm. off all that foreign debris, all that energy, all that chaos, climb back into your own skin mm. and find your authentic self before you even start dating or thinking about dating. Yeah, I you tell you, that's exactly right. And I am 150% on board with, with that one of you because I have seen it over and over again. And the thing that I, I think a lot of people... Um, in, a lot of people are forgiving with career and the children and the parents, but when it comes to their own personal companion, 
many people don't really know what they want. And so if they don't know what they want, how is the universe going to send that to them? Well, the universe will send you whatever you're frequenting, whether you say Uh, it out loud. You know, the universe is like, oh, you're feeling crappy today. Okay, I'm going to send you Mr. Crappy. Mr. Crappy's all over. It's like, no, you were frequenting that frequency. And the universe was like, oh, that's what you want? Okay, okay, I'm going to give you that and more. So Uh, it's always like, you know, love yourself and love yourself some more. Mm -hmm. Um, be good to yourself and be gooder. Like you have to like keep having these conversations and pull the weeds of what, what you don't want. Because if you keep writing down, thinking what you don't want, you're going to get what you don't want. (laughs) Yeah, that's so true, Tanya. Now I want, I want to ask just to go a little bit deeper into another layer. Um, when, when you talk to clients that come to you for these type of, you know, I got to get clarity in my relationship. I want to manifest and attract a better version of relationship and stop attracting Mr. Crappy or Mrs. Crappy. Do you find that there is some repeat patterning from their childhood, their parents or their grandparents relationships? And so just kind of like you said early on of conditioning and not of taking on belief systems or patterning that isn't yours. Do you find many of your clients that come for Shah mediumship are attracting those repeat types of relationships? I find most people, um, they will date themselves or an aspect of themselves. They date their mom and they date their dad. Same thing, different face, same frequency, vibration, whatever. I've dated my dad twice, my mom twice, and myself twice. I am happy to say I'm su- successfully single now. Or I'm succulent <laughs> and single. I'm succulent and single. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm totally in my skin and I'm happy because I, my thing is, is I do not want to fix anybody anymore. So right now I just know I need to just stay clean and clear and get rid of all my debris. Like I don't even want to date, but I think a lot of people, they, they feel like if they're alone or single, you know, you're going to be like an old maid or some other cosmic chaos going on. So it's, it's really about, you know, loving yourself, trusting yourself. And w- what does your life look like? What do you want it to look like? Not what somebody perceives is the great life, you know, because I have a lot of clients as well. You know what they perceive my life is, oh, my God, and that they're they have a better life in an aspect, whatever it, that looks like. Right. But I'm not in competition. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And so we kind of have that weird thing about labeling and competition. I mean, we do it with everything. We do it. Why do people do that? Why do they do that? It's (laughs) that comes from the dark ages and all the religious crap. And oh, God, yeah, those timelines. That's why they're merging right now. All this clutter is getting cleared away. And you're you're either going to clear it away and stay down here or not clear it away and stay down here or clear it away and start moving going, over it into a higher timeline. Going So the higher timelines where a lot of these dense stuck energies from these unresolved issues um, from all these different things, these, they don't belong in the higher dimensions, like the fifth dimension and on up. They don't exist there. They don't exist. There. Thank you for clarifying that. That is so true. And in, in, I know in my tradition of Buddhism, that's what we keep saying over and over and over again. But people don't necessarily understand that. So can you can you explain how um, addressing these reoccurring issues in your life will lighten up your frequency and bring you into a higher dimension where your reality is more fluid, more cohesive, much more enjoyable? Can you explain that so people can actually get a picture and like wrap their mind around how these simple acts can make such huge changes in their reality. Well, I mean, even right now, I mean, think of (laughs) my dad calls it the COVID. (laughs) 
you know, COVID actually was is a great thing, uh, whether people recognize it or not. The people that are still living in fear and worried about a vaccine, they're not going to rise above it. Okay, the universe, the frequencies, whatever you want to call it, none of that exists in the higher dimensions. So when you frequent the frequency, you're going to attract what you don't want, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same with money, right? We go through this thing. How how much money is enough? And the reason I bring up the COVID is a lot of people aren't working, lose their jobs, you know, there's stuff going on, but we have needs and we want wants. Do we really need the sports car? No, we don't. Does that make you a better human being? Not necessarily. You know, we need more unity and community. We need our values like need to be higher elevated over what really matters right right yeah i i i i fully agree with the um you know like the the current pandemic that's going on right now it's kind of, almost kind of like a reset button almost kind of like a, a, a forced cleansing a forced purging of issues like making you really look at your your core self and go okay um i'm given the opportunity to kind of clean up the garbage that I've been dragging on because I can't move forward. So I, it, there's a lot of silver linings. Mm-hmm. And um, just like any kind of illness that anybody goes through, while you're going through it, it's not fun. But once you come out of it, um, you know, you see clearer. And I, I think that is what's going on as well. Have you had clients come through because of, you know, these existen- existential questions that have been brought forth at this time? Um, I have a lot of clients that have been conditioned, <laughs> you know. Um, I've had a couple things. I have one client that's totally living in fear still. Um, and then I had another client, and they're all older. They're 70 to 80 years old. Another client, an interesting story, his um, two, I think they're sister-in-laws or I don't know, but they live in a living center, not assisted, but they kind of have their own apartments. And they both went to get tested for COVID. They sat there for three hours and they're older, you know, so they left. They ended up not doing the test. And they, a week later, they get a notice in the mail that they tested positive for a test they never had. So, huh. I mean, there's some manipulation going on on different avenues. And I think, again, you know, even with, um, you know, we have, there's so much diversity and it's, it's unnecessary. What does your heart say? My heart does not say I am against this kind of human. I think this human had this experience. I think they need validation in that emotion that it existed and it happened and it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. We don't validate our emotions. We don't have conversations with our heart and we, you know, where, where are the triggers? Yeah. You know, are they in your energetic field? Are you Mm -hmm. seeing pictures? Are they real or are you creating them? Right. Right. You know, we can, it's almost like a permission slip. Write their own story. It's just, what's your story you want to be? What, what do you want your story to be? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's almost like it's acting like a permission slip, you know, you know, like, you know, like you have a permission slip in school, like here's your permission slip to go to the hallway, to go to the bathroom, you know, or you can just go, I need to go to the bathroom and just take self-responsibility and go to the bathroom and come back. Um, but, you know, it's almost like, I mean, everybody's experience is going to be a little bit different. Um, and I've spoken to different clients on different, you know, places in this whole thing with COVID. And again, it just like for some people, they need something and then that helps them make the transition a little bit easier. easier. For others, they don't need any kind of permission slips. They're just able to make a transition. So, um, yeah, it, it's interesting. Like when you have clients come through and... Um, do you ever check in with them later down the road to kind of see, did they follow through with the guidance that the spirit gave them for their healing and working on their life? Do you ever get follow ups? Uh, yes. So <laughs> I had, so I can also work through pictures. You give me a picture, a birthday and a full name. I always have to have a full name. Otherwise I 
go out of body and grab somebody else's timeline. Weird story, but that happens more often than not. Um, and actually, the guy I'll tell you about, um, I needed his full name. I didn't have his full name. So I go out, I call it vectoring, and I go out of body. I go into a timeline, um, and I couldn't find the particular guy I was looking for. But the next morning, a client with the same name had texted me and said, why were you in my dreams last night? <laughs> so I took a screenshot and I sent it to my friend who referred this gentleman to me. I was like, this is why I need a full name and a birthday. And he was like, oh my gosh. So the, he sent me a picture of the guy, um, doesn't live here. And eventually, say six months later, he came to town and the picture he gave me, um, I just told him, I said, he had a meth problem. And I said, I, I can't work with this picture. I said, because you're using meth in this image. And I said, it's like Groundhog Day for me, reliving the same thing every day, day in, day out. I said, I need a picture when you were clean and when you were happy. And he said, well, that's when I was two. And I was like, fine, give me a two-year-old picture. I don't care. I said, but I can't work with this one. So, um, yeah, so now he's, he's cleaning up his meth life. But I, ha I have a happy picture, so I can go into that timeline. And, and, and what was in store for him on the happier timeline, you know, since he chose to work towards it? So, yeah, exactly, right? So he, he <laughs> wants to clear up, clean up his life because he has grandkids, he has children. He knows what's happening to his body, and he just want, he wants to live. So he decided of his own free will, right? His heart got invested. So he just needed me to help kind of assist in cleaning up. You know, people that do drugs like that, they have a lot of entities can just climb in those holes. So that you have to, you know, that takes longer to clean that shit off. <laughs> but, no worries. Uh, there's, you know, there's a lot going on that I don't think the average Joe really knows like entities are real darkness is real you know they need a host they need a friend and somebody on meth is a great host and i almost think <laughs> i was thinking this the other day i was like this is where they got the movie the walking dead like that's what's happening here <laughs> yeah that that completely makes sense now let me ask you something about the entities um or the disembodied spirits um, who play with you because you're not taking control of your own experience. Um, do they, they reside in the higher dimensions? I know the answer, but people always ask this. <laughs> you know, it's always curious. Why would they think they resided in a higher dimension? You know, a lot of dark energies don't know that they're dark, to be honest, mm. and they need assistance as well. It's like they, they miss the doorway, their death, they didn't curate, go through it. They don't even know they're dead, some of them. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know that they're in essence. And they're still, you know, they're still sitting in a lower frequency themselves, still processing how they died. Because we, again, when people die, we don't um, ancestralize them. We don't honor their life. We don't celebrate their life. We don't cry rivers you know and some cultures do and i feel like we need to get back into culture <laughs> culture in a community right because you know when you think about like native americans you think of different shamans whether mm -hmm. it's mongolian african peruvian mm -hmm. um, buddhism different yep. cultures you know they they honor their they celebrate the life of the ancestry, the yeah. Over, mm -hmm. it's not like a one and done thing. And here, you know, it's this rush, 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 rush. So, a lot of them, again, they don't because nobody's weeped for them, nobody cried for them, nobody sent those tears of joy and life and expression and helped them cross over. Mm -hmm. So they get stuck here to heal whatever thing they didn't resolve before they died. Right. Whether it's you know, a war, <laughs> war, the revolutionary war, Hitler's crap, whatever it is, mm -hmm. there's so much cosmic chaos going on. Mm -hmm. so you have all these things you got to 
shuffle through. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah, and and there's a, a great there's many many stories um, in Buddhism and in many other traditions about these disembodied spirits, eventually losing connection um, and just being so far removed that they completely forget how to go back into light. So when they get into crossing with somebody like yourself who is connected, are they able to find their way back home? Yeah, and again, I mean, they still have to go through a process mm-hmm. again. So it's, you know, and just allowing, it's an allowing kind of thing. And it's mm-hmm. baby steps. It's not like one and done. Some of them go really quick because they're tired and mm-hmm. somebody, you know, within their lineage has found them and assists them to pull them over as well. But again, I don't think people have those conversations even with their ancestors who have crossed over. And that's really what 90% of your spirit guides are anyway, is somebody within a lifetime, a dimension that, you know, they're healing their discourse in another lifetime as you're healing yours. I mean, it's a, <laughs> there's so much. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I totally get it. Now let's, you know, as we get further into the fifth dimension and move for some people go into the higher dimensions like yourself um, and live this higher vibe you know, realities, um, what tips can people use today to connect to the higher selves and kind of process and move forward into creating a higher reality for themselves? Um, well, I, I think solitude is huge. I think nature is huge. Um, like a climbing back into your skin, literally, a lot of people aren't aren't living the life they're meant to live they're living the life that their mother wanted them to have or their dad or an uncle or a teacher you know they're not being authentic to what their heart wants they're really not having that conversation what does my heart want and what does that story look like and we have the ability to change our reality at will if we know what we want that reality to look like so even relationships. So my clients that are, you know, keep dating the same person with a different face. I always have them write down on one side of a paper, everything that they didn't like about every person they date. And then on the next side, I always make them write down the positive or turn that around into a positive. And then I also have them write down everything that they liked about that person they dated. So then we can throw this in the trash and then start working on collecting whatever that story looks like. And what, what do you want to do in your life? You know, especially women, women have been programmed that, you know, you go to school, you get married, you have kids, you get the picket fence, whatever that looks like. And, you know, you wake up because that isn't what, none of that's what your heart wanted, but that's what you were told a good life was, right? Yeah. So again, what does your story look like? What did you really want to do? Oh my gosh, I wanted to be a ballerina. I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be a fairy designer. I don't know. Whatever that, or a writer, whatever, you know, that looks like. So just start doing it. You know, we always put things off. And that's the cool thing about this pandemic. Everybody who's put off things that their heart really wanted to do, now they have the opportunity. So it's like everything. Yes. I have I have time to write this book. I can Google this. I can figure this out. I can create a podcast. Whatever that looks mm-hmm. like. So, you know, it's a, it's a matter of looking at what's positive about this COVID. I think mm-hmm. the silver linings everywhere. Right? Yeah. I I completely agree with you and I and you know, I know different people will have different perspectives, but I really do feel ever since the very beginning of this pandemic from wherever it came from that this was an opportunity and there's so many silver linings. Um, but you know, the wonderful thing about our conversation today, and I know we're just getting really just on the very surface level of, um, you know, Shah media, mediumship in the fifth dimension is that, you know, when people think of the traditional shamanism, there's a lot of kind of um, 
myth and kind of speculation about it. But in the conversation that we've had, it's very, it's very science-based living. It's very looking at things and being honest with yourself and kind of going further back into the root of it and addressing it. So um, it's not that mystical. It's actually very logical. So, um, and I think a lot of people are going to be kind of awakened to that this is a tool that can really help them thrive in these higher dimensions that we go further into. So where, Tanya, can people find your product offerings? So I have a website. Um, pretty much actually just Google Tanya D. Uh, my podcast will come up. It's Musing with Tanya D. I have a YouTube channel. Again, Tanya D., I have a corridor where I host all my online courses called um, club.tanyad.tv. And then my regular website is tanyad.tv. So I have tons of information out there. I'm on social media. Like I said, everything, I just kept everything Tanya D. It's pretty simple. I'm easy to find that way. So yeah, love to hear from you. Yeah, you guys, um, she's a great resource. So definitely, if you're going through that dark night of the soul right now and you want to come out of the pandemic, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and ready to take on the fifth dimension and just get the old baggage out and move forward and, you know, put good stuff in your, your luggage, you know, Tanya is a really great resource. So, Tanya, thank you so much for a wonderful, wonderful interview. And thank you, everyone, for listening to our enlightening conversation as we dive further into the fifth dimension. Take care. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And Ashe. You too. Namaste.